which we're going to talk about next. Because I feel like while you've got that going, we kind of have to give it some kind of light and discussion weekly because that potentially has the, you know, that really does have the potential to blow up. But instead of taking an independent approach tonight, I want to take a look at something that I caught in CNBC, believe it or not. And, mm. and, and it was, it was halfway for CNBC. I'd say it was tepid. Um, for anybody else, you know, for a leftist, I would say it was terrible, but it wasn't too bad. Um, so here, check this out. Uh, let's go to this screen here. Whip. Hey, okay. Let's drag this over a little bit. That's Greg's face, everybody. And Rob's too. All right. UAW says that there's more to be won despite record offers from automakers and declines to expand the strikes. Now, this is what really I was looking for five o'clock Friday. What's going to happen? And it was updated at 645. What's going to happen with Sean Fain's weekly address? Because every week he's been announcing whether they're going to close another plant. Last week, they shut down the plant in Kentucky, the truck plant. It's still shut down. There are now currently 23,000 auto workers out of a potential 146,000. You're still looking at a small percentage, most of which is not affecting the daily operations now of the manufacturers. Pay for that truck plant. Ford has basically now come to the table and Bill Ford, I don't have that this week, but I think it's in the article. Bill Ford is threatening the people and saying, basically, this is the last deal you're going to get. And we're gonna, you know, we're gonna have to start moving production. Right, you better take it, or else. Or we'll have to start moving production yeah. elsewhere. Is what they're what they're threatening. So what Sean Fain is saying, right. and let me get this off of CNBC so that we can not advertise for their sponsors. Right, the UAW union believes that there is more to be won in ongoing contract negotiations with negotiations with the Detroit automakers following five weeks of labor strikes against the companies. His comments come despite record contract offers from General Motors. And again, I'm, I told you, and Stellantis, you're going to get nonsense that now include 23% hourly pay increases and other significantly enhanced benefits over the terms of the four and a half year deal. Divide 23 by four and a half. Can we do some math? That's math, about 6%. That's about 6%. That's a little less than 6% annually considering that the union had to give back a ton of pay in the last contract, they were looking for 40%. This is about half. I figured they would settle somewhere around 32 or 33%. And this is at 23. And they're saying that this is the best that they can do. Bain is saying there's more to be won. And I agree with him, but he's not really playing hardball enough. I think still these, there are already record contracts, but they it's come at the geometry. It is, but they all come at the end of decades of record decline. So it's not enough to be the best ever when auto workers have gone backwards over the last two decades. That's a really low bar. Despite his comments, the union did not announce additional strikes Friday against any of the companies because the bottom line is, is they've got cards left to play and, they, and the manufacturers have money left to spend. The problem is that the union doesn't have the kind of money to play the kind of game that they want to play which is why they're playing games in a way with this 23,000, 24,000, 12% of all the auto workers in the country. Man, it, it makes my blood boil. Bain didn't address a, re a report Friday by Bloomberg that the union has asked for a 25% increase. So already in general wages. So wait a minute, you were at 40, they offered 23 in hourly pay. All right, and now you want 20. Now it reported that he wants 25. The union has not announced any additional strikes, okay. right, since initiating an unexpected walkout on October 11th at the Kentucky plant, Kentucky, Kentucky truck plant workout. That's funny. Trucky. <laughs> right. That produces the highly profitable trucks and SUVs. But meanwhile, they've got enough day supply on the ground to cover them for the next 60 days. 
That's despite Ford having the best proposal regarding economics, as outlined by, by Fain on Friday. I disagree with that, too, necessarily. Now, I haven't seen all the proposals, but what he's focusing on is getting the electric factory workers under contract and as part of the UAW. But it's not pushing for wages to be equivalent to the current factory workers now. So great. Yeah. He's going to end up getting dues from guys that are making two thirds as much as the people to do pretty much the same jobs at a different organization across the street. So here, here we go with Bill Ford. Um, Bain spent a, a notable amount of time during the broadcast discussing how the union plans to use these talks to assist in organizing non-union plans. Okay. He also heavily criticized Monday the comments of Bill Ford Okay, to bring an end to the negotiations because Bill Ford said it shouldn't be Ford versus the UAW. He said it should be the UAW and Ford against foreign automakers. That sounds very nice. He says, I want to be crystal clear on one thing. The days of the UAW and Ford being a team to fight other companies are over. Non-union auto workers are not the enemy. Those are our future union family. Uh-huh. So what he's talking about are all of the foreign manufacturers that have opened up non-union uh, plants in right-to-work states like Tennessee and Texas and South Carolina. And that's where the trend has been heading towards. They haven't been opening new plants in Michigan and California and New York and places where a union, you know, where you need, where you have a certain size, you can have a union and it's not, there's not just right to work. Not that unions are illegal, but it's a lot more difficult than a right to work state to get a union going, especially if the company doesn't want one. So Ford said it remains eager to conclude these negotiations with a contract, right? That benefits workers, citing it's good that Mr. Fain acknowledged Ford's contract offer already is a record and remains at one, the best one on the table. So Ford is playing games and gaslighting sure. here too, right? Yeah, this is the best you're going to get, so deal with it. Right. Stellantis said that, that the sides continue to be productive, building on momentum from the past several weeks, but declined to discuss specific details. GM didn't say anything at all, citing details it released of its most recent offer earlier Friday. Right, the 23%. That's the best you're getting from us right now. We have no further comment. The UAW well, has an expanded strike. Now, this is really important, and I don't understand why, because they really haven't gotten very far. They have not expanded a strike at GM since September 29th or Stellantis since September 22nd, despite offers made this week not meeting details of even Ford's proposal from last week and Fain saying last week that the union was, in, was initiating a new phase of strikes and contract negotiations. Yeah, one where they're going to cave and do nothing. I'm hoping tomorrow morning that they call yep. out a bunch of GM and, and Stellantis plants, but my guess is they're not going to. Right? They're not. The, the manufacturers are not going to cave. They're not. They're, they're, they're already, you can hear the language here from the boss. This is, remember, this is the network of the bosses. You're hearing this from their language to the people who watch the bosses, watch CNBC, read CNBC, they're communicating how they think this is going to go down and how they expect this to go down and how they intend this to go down because they control the cards just about unless Bain does the one thing he hasn't done, which is use the power of the union and shut down the plants nationwide. He's got... He's got... He's got to throw it on the table at that point. But he's got Christmas time coming. My guess is that if things aren't resolved by New Year's, January 1st, everybody goes out. But you got to get everybody through the holidays. You can't tell the kids there's going to be no Christmas because we've been on strike for three months. I think that's honestly part of it. Huh? And I'm not giving him a break or a pass sure. or an anything. I'm just trying to look at it from an optics standpoint. And can you imagine... How the you how the manufacturers would have been hammering him in a way for for putting everybody out and ruining Christmas 
for 150,000 auto workers. Literally would have been the narrative. How dare you be so anti-Semitic? Not <laughs> everyone is celebrating Christmas. Scrooge. Well, you know? Right, but you know how the networks go. So, sure. even though, you know, we've seen the graphic that there's there's quite a few that are not Christian of the anchors and the executives, but we'll yep. talk about that another time. But the strike at Kentucky plant, which is responsible for $25 billion in revenue annually, that's good, marked a major escalation in Ford, right, in the, in the stand-up strikes. Again, they're using the the UAW language, they at least have a decent PR department that's pushing out a narrative. It's not a good narrative, but it's a narrative. They're trying. No. They're at right. least trying. It, uh, we did the best we could. There are other unions that don't even really try and don't communicate at all and let corporate media completely frame their yeah. narrative. So, you know, I don't even know what, whether Ask that's a win. Hour in the chat. If the minimum wage kept up with CEO compensation since the 1970s, the minimum wage would be 53 an hour. 53, wow. So, comp CEO comp. And I've, I've read the thing about productivity. Yeah. The problem is that the minimum wage was never designed or built to keep up with productivity, though it should be the average yeah. wage, you know, um, or the, it shouldn't necessarily be a minimum, right. but unless you It you're, should be living wage, but yes, it's well, I mean, it should help combat if we're CEO for co ops. If we're for co ops, yes, it should be right a, a percentage of the earnings yeah. from the company. But anyway, so what the reason why I like this the most, this article, is because it actually does lay out what the current proposal is to the UAW that all three automakers have offered a 23% pay increase over four and a half years. That is not enough. That is not enough. They're not making enough now. They're going to make what? 6% more this year? All right. 6% more when inflation and cost of living has gone up way more that, than that in the last three years alone. Right. So all three automakers have agreed to eliminate wage tiers at parts facilities where workers have historically been paid less. That's good. All right. Ford's been offered a three year progression on top of the wage rate. A system that was in place in the mid '90s until the aftermath of the 2008 economic crisis. Now GM offered also three years, but only for current workers, not for new ones, which is weird. And they want a more gra granular stuff. Cost of living adjustments. Ford is offered to restore it to, le to the level last used in 2009, which is still crappy, by the way, because that was again post stock market crash when everybody had to take a haircut, right? So GM is approaching, you certainly did. right? Approaching restoration, but not fully there. Right. When Stellantis wants to delay cost of living adjustments by a year, Ford and Stellantis have agreed to give the union right to strike over plant closures, which is a key UAW demand. GM has rejected that demand, but this is the big thing here is this temporary worker stuff. Because they're hiring a lot of temporary workers, especially now to replace the striking workers. They're scabs. Ford has offered to convert current temp workers with 90 days of service to full-time employees with a raise to 21 per hour for remaining in future temps. That's good. But still not enough. 21 an hour, not enough. Whether these future temps will be converted to full-time employees automatically is still being negotiated, right? So, retirement plans. 21, 21 an hour is under the living wage for a single person in Mississippi. Right. And this is not in Mississippi. Right. Stellantis agreed to convert thousands of current temps to full time status with a wage increase to 20 per hour for remaining in future temps. So, they're starting to barely pay a living wage after earning tens of billions of dollars in revenue. In, in, in profit and doing and yet they'll take the first deal offered because billions in stock buybacks too right so yeah. retirement plans they're offering a three dollar increase to pay it to pension benefits mm -hmm. they're they're contributing nine nine and a half percent plus a dollar an hour 
You know, I, it, they need those pensions. A dollar I mean, an hour increase. I mean, they don't have 401ks. They don't get 401k. Like, this is it. That plus Social Security is what they have to live on for the rest of their lives. Once they retire. Right. And then you've got profit sharing Ford improve offered to improve its existing profit sharing formula. That's nice by including profits from Ford credit, which is that's good. Right. And then work life balance. All three automakers have offered to make Juneteenth an official paid holiday and two weeks of paid parental leave. Oh, uh, yeah. So sure. basically. One day off extra. That all the executives, by the way, also will right. get off and paid. So yeah. it's nothing specific for the union no, they'll members. They'll get other oh, one paid holiday. Yeah, I mean, it's just... And who's to say that's for a specific group or not? Yeah, but didn't didn't you Biden know, make Juneteenth... Might, they a might only let the fucking... Right. Juneteenth's yep. a federal holiday now, if I remember correctly. Right. So it's it's like literally like, well, we'll give you... The other days off that you're supposed to get, like off. They wanted you know, 32 like hour literally work. Literally, it's a federal holiday. They wanted a 32 hour work week. Oh. Uh, yeah. And they're okay. being offered Juneteenth and pay and two weeks of paid parental leave. Thanks. Best we can do is Juneteenth ice cream, everyone. Maybe a pizza party. Dude. Uh, it's everybody's being squeezed everywhere. Everybody's being screwed. Like, is anybody getting ahead anywhere? I'm glad Himbo got a new job. He's hooked up. Uh, good for him. I'm working on something. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see what happens. But 